So imagine you're a math student. You've made it through real analysis. You have survived measure theory. You have wrestled a bit with linear algebra. And maybe you have even internalized the idea that 0 0.9999 is actually equal to one. But now you are staring down the world of quant finance or tech. And suddenly everyone is talking about Python or C++ or Java. And you're just sitting there wondering, wait, how do I actually start? Like, what do we actually do when someone says learn to code? Are you meant to build an app, learn algorithms to make a website, or God forbid, build one of those to-do list apps every tutorial starts with? This is the video I wish someone had made for me. A clear, practical, no BS guide to learning how to code as a math student. Not to become a full stack developer straight away, not to chase the next unicorn startup, but to build the exact skills that will help you land a quant role or an engineering role, to pass technical interviews and genuinely feel confident writing real, useful code. So let's get right into it. Okay, so you know what the biggest mistake that I see math students make when learning how to code? They completely forget that they are already ahead. They would go straight to tutorials on how to build a shopping cart or a logging screen. And I'm like, why? This has absolutely nothing to do with what you care about. You're not trying to reinvent Trello. You're trying to translate maths into code. A lot of students actually get stuck here. They start copying portfolio website tutorials or they try to build a to-do app because someone on Reddit said you should. But unless your goal is front-end development, you're just wasting time. So here is what I would do instead. I would start by writing code around concepts that you already understand. So don't touch front-end, at least not yet. Don't even worry about real-world applications, yet. Instead, go back to the topics that you know from uni and turn those into small Python scripts that you understand. So here I'm talking about things like simulating a binomial distribution using NumPy, approximating Pi using Monte Carlo simulations, writing your own algorithm for matrix multiplication and comparing it to NumPy's results, coding a Markov chain and watching uh, transitions play over time, visualizing the convergence of a Fourier series or a Taylor expansion. There are so many of these that you can try out. Not only is this the better way to learn syntax, it actually cements your math knowledge and makes everything that you're learning um, in code more meaningful. And it also builds confidence because you're not just copying a tutorial. You're building from something that you already get, which is the thing that will give you the head start. This is what they call your unfair advantage. You don't need to make it pretty. You just need to document what you did, explain your thought process, and maybe throw it on GitHub. That's already miles ahead of most applicants. And it proves that you can turn theoretical knowledge into work in code. Now, once you have dipped your toes in and written a few math-based scripts, you're going to hit a wall. You realize, okay, I kind of know how to write a for loop or how to define a function, but I don't actually understand how everything fits together in the bigger picture. This is where structured resources really help, but your timing will be key here. If you dive into a massive CS course too early, you're gonna burn out. If you stick to copy-paste tutorials forever, you're gonna hit a plateau. So here is how I would structure it. First, I would start with Brilliant, who are also very kindly sponsoring today's video. Their interactive courses are actually perfect for Mac students because they actually teach logic and syntax for hands-on problem solving, not passive videos. They help you think in code. Quite literally, actually. That's the name of one of their best courses, Thinking in Code. If you're a math student learning programming for the first time, this course trains you how to mentally simulate how code executes in terms of loops, conditionals, variables, logic, all in a visual step-by-step -step way. From there, you can dive into programming with Python and programming with functions, which are perfect if you want to bridge the gap between writing scripts and thinking like an actual developer. And when you are ready to connect your math knowledge into real-world data problems, their data analysis path, especially the introduction to probability and their regression and classification courses are incredibly useful. I at least definitely made good use of them when I was studying for interviews. Everything is interactive, problem-based and designed to build actual intuition. No watching endless tutorials and forgetting everything five minutes later. It's all structured play and it's a fantastic first step if you are into that intellectually curious but technically unsure phase. So if you want to try everything that Brilliant has to offer, click the link down in the description below, which is brilliant.org slash Roman for a 30-day free trial followed by a 20% off an 
annual premium subscription. Huge thank you to Brilliant for supporting the channel and making it way easier to go from a math brain to a coding brain. All right, once you've got a foundational intuition, I move on to something like Python from A to Z on Udemy. This is a much more traditional course. You'll learn object-oriented programming, how to handle files, what all of the core data structures are, and you'll write slightly bigger programs that force you to think in terms of an actual flow and structure. I would say that that combination of intuition from Brilliant and depth from Udemy is a great way to build real fluency without getting overwhelmed. So, what language should you learn first? In almost all cases, I would suggest you start with Python. It's readable, it's very flexible, and it has amazing libraries for numerical computation, for statistics, for data analysis, plotting, machine learning, literally everything. And most importantly, I would say that it lowers that barrier uh, to entry. You can spend your time learning how to think like a programmer and not worrying about curly braces or memory management. You will often hear people say that C++ is actually the gold standard, especially in the finance industry. And that's true, especially when we're talking high frequency trading or low latency roles. But it's also quite a pain, I would say, to learn as your first language. And if you try to dive straight into it without a solid foundation, you'll just end up very confused and probably demotivated. So yeah, start with Python. And once you're comfortable with programming concepts, it's way easier to transition into something more low level. Next, what should you actually learn? So if I had to build sort of a syllabus for my past self, it would go something like, Start with the basics, you know, variables, loops, conditional functions. You need to get comfortable writing very small pieces of code. Next, learn how data is stored and manipulated. We're talking lists, dictionaries, sets, tuples. Know when to use which one and why. Understand basic algorithms, sorting, searching, recursion. Learn how to think about time complexity here as well. Then dive into object-oriented programming. Classes, inheritance, encapsulation, it feels very abstract at first, but it is the basis of pretty much every real world code base. So you need to be very, very strong on these. Then get used to working with libraries, NumPy for arrays, Pandas for data frames, Matplotlib for plotting. Of course, very important, learn how to debug, know where to put your print statements, know how to read a stack trace, and eventually do some basic unit testing. And finally, learn to write code which is readable, and that's not just for you, but for someone else six months down the line. Okay, so now that you've got a theory, how do you actually get better? Well, that's quite simple actually, you just write more code. A lot of it. You solve small problems every day, even if it's just for 30 minutes. You build things and you refactor them. That's how you go from knowing Python syntax to actually being a programmer. So I can give you a list of some concrete ideas for some very small projects that you might try. So I would suggest you do something like write a function to simulate a coin toss, then you simulate 10,000 of them, let's say, and then you can estimate pi using Monte Carlo simulations. For something more fancy, you can build a Black Scholes option pricer, first with closed form solution, then with a numerical approximation. Sticking on the finance trend, you can download historical stock data using Y Finance and plot a simple moving average strategy. And if you want some actual deployment, some pretty things here and there, you can make a small streamlit app that lets you toggle parameters and see how your output changes. If you want to practice coding interviews specifically, I would start doing lead code easy problems, then mediums. Pay attention to how other people write your solutions. Try to make yours cleaner, shorter, or more readable. Now, obviously you do not need to be solving hard problems in under 10 minutes. That's not really your goal, but you do need to get used to writing code under time pressure, debugging some edge cases, and thinking in an algorithmic way. So again, to recap, the best way to get into this would be to start with some easy problems, focus on the most common ones. I'm talking arrays, strings, hash maps, basic recursion. You can time yourself. I would say 30 minutes per problem at the maximum. And after each one, I would watch a video walkthrough. When it comes to walkthroughs, I think that Need Code is quite elite. He's got full roadmaps, curated problem sets, and a whole YouTube channel where he explains the why behind each solution, not just the code. I think that's super helpful if you come up from a more theoretical or mathematical background and you need some help actually connecting the dots. I would also recommend looking at exorcism.io for some guided mentorship, or if you're feeling very ambitious, 
CS50 for a foundational computer science overview. But honestly, lead code plus mid code plus consistency, I would say it's enough to get through most technical interviews, especially if you're combining that with project work and some actual understanding of algorithms. Okay, but once you start actually applying for roles, especially in quant finance, you're gonna notice that interviews are a bit weird. They're not asking you to build a full stack app or design a database scheme. They're gonna ask you to like implement a function that passes a string and extract something very, very specific. You're gonna optimize, let's say, a brute force solution using a smarter data structure. You're gonna look into some handling of floating point issues with precision, or they're gonna make you debug some logic on a whiteboard or on a shared Google Doc. Of course, these don't really sound like difficult problems in theory, but on the time pressure, especially with someone watching and also having a job on the line, that's a different skill set entirely, I would say. So what I would suggest you do is you practice in the format of the interview. So time yourself, talk out loud, very, very important. Actually do explain your thought process out loud. Write code in a basic text editor, not just in Jupyter. Think of it like training for a sport, I would say. So the closer your practice matches a real thing, the better you're gonna perform. So if you're consistent, say one hour per day, you can go from zero to interview ready in two to three months. Of course, you won't be perfect, but you'll be competent. And most importantly, you're going to gain a lot of confidence. You're going to know what you know. You're going to have a few projects to talk about. You're going to be able to ask good questions when reviewing other people's code. And I think that's the baseline that you want to hit. So if I were starting from zero again today, here's exactly how I would structure my learning just to recap this video. So number one, start by coding simple math problems I already know inside out. Like literally, just open a Jupyter notebook, implement a central limit theorem with some plotting, code your own matrix inverse function, just get your hands dirty a bit. Number two, use Brilliant to learn the fundamentals of Python and data logic in a hands-on interactive way, especially their science and programming tracks. Number three would be to follow a complete course like Python A to Z on Udemy to get some deep exposure to functions, objects, data structures and algorithms. I would start by solving one lead code problem per day using mid codes playlist and explanations to really absorb those patterns. Number five, I would build one relevant project. It doesn't need to be fancy, but it should show real thinking. Uh, so for example, if you're going to quant finance something like a Black Shoals pricer or a backtester with strategy parameter, I would add it to GitHub with some comments and some readme files and you're pretty much ready to go here. And number six, which I actually haven't talked about, but I would suggest is pretty important. Join a community, you can join some Discord servers, you can join some uh, Reddit and coding groups and you ask for feedback. It genuinely makes a huge difference to have someone else review a code and tell you where you could possibly improve. And that's it. That's literally the playbook. So if you're on this journey now, whether you're nervously Googling how to code as a quant or grinding lit code problems after lectures, I definitely do see you. It's a weird but quite exciting path and if you approach it with the same structure and rigor that you are already bringing to your math degree, you'll be just fine. I genuinely hope that you have enjoyed this video and that it has brought you some value. Also, I have just launched a Discord server for math students quant hopefuls and anyone learning to code in this weird liminal space between academia and industry. So come join, share your projects, ask for feedback or just vibe with like-minded nerds. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this and give this video a thumbs up to show your support. Hit the bell to get notified every single time I upload a new video and follow me on my Instagram for more content. If you want to see more of me, I'm a lot more active on that. Good luck in your maths and your coding journey. I'm definitely rooting for you and I hope to see you in the next one. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline. Want you by my head.